Guys, welcome back to Behind Closed Doors. I'm Pete, that's Taylor, and I am hung the fuck over. Yeah, well, it's, it's a Wednesday, so last night was a Tuesday. Why are you hung over? It's my birthday. And that's just an excuse to go drink on a Tuesday night? <laughs> How old did you turn? Uh, 24. Okay, so what'd you do last night? Uh, went and hung out with the Costa guys and some other friends and ended up just playing games. Ryan Tierney was there. Of course he was. Ryan just like showed up for a little while. Um, and then we just played drinking games and did nothing. Tierney actually, he texted me something weird last night. I didn't respond to him. Let's see. Let me pull this up. What did he say? Uh, let's see. At 10.02 p.m. last night, he texted me. They do share a room. <laughs> I had to take a photo, and then he said, Pete is blacked out. Oh, there's proof right there. That's because they, they bought me tequila, and they're like, all right, we're going to finish this, all this tequila. And I was just like, I don't want to do this, but like, if I have to, I have to. So how many shots of tequila do you think you had last night? Uh, stop counting after, or, you know, kind of, I would say around like eight, maybe more, maybe 10. And it was just like you four dudes there drinking tequila? No, then we had uh, our other friends with us as well. There was like four girls. So how many total? Um, so there was probably nine. Wow, in a little apartment? Yeah. Did, uh, was anyone worried about the Rona? No. Nope. Was everyone getting that drunk or just you? Uh, no, everybody was. Everybody, we were kind of like all uh, as a group taking the shot. So it wasn't just me. And then you guys were just like bumping music in the apartment? Yeah. And how long were you there? I don't know. Did you wake up in your room or somewhere else? Uh, yeah, my room. So you, you figured out how to Uber home last night. Mm -hmm. What happened to your lip? I don't know. You don't know how you I had this bruise on my arm. I like don't know if I got in a fight with one of them last night or what happened. Nobody's reporting fights back. Um, how old did you turn? 24. 24. And at what point in your birthday do you think you're going to stop blacking out for your birthday? Or is it never for you? Oh, once I get old. What's old? 40. 40? <laughs> so you're like, old enough where it's like, it's like, there's no point and it's going to be too much of a hangover. But like, I'll be in my party years until at least 30, 35. Uh, 35 is so pretty, like, hard party out. years up to like 32. Okay. I don't know. Did you set an alarm this morning? Yeah. What time do you wake up? I set about 100 alarms. For what time? Uh, I, I do them in a range of just like, it's like, look at all of them. You did. From like 6 a.m. to like 10? Yeah. What, yeah. what time did you wake up? Wait. Uh, you rose? Say it again. High five. What time did you wake up? I uh, woke up at like 8. Oof. And what time did you get to the office? Like 10. What were you doing between 8 and 10? Uh, trying to get up. <laughs> how, many, how much coffee have you had today? Uh, just this cold room. You haven't had any coffee? That's the key oh, to the day. Wake up and drink coffee. Well, I was drinking water right away. Went with all the, you know, the vitamin C's, the water, try to get some hydration back in me. Then you came in with the cold brew. And now I might just start drinking again. Alcohol. Maybe. It's 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm going to go home and go to sleep. <laughs> Insane. So what, what would happen if you just like slept in all day till like noon? Like would uh -huh. D get pissed? Well, I mean, if, if we didn't have anything to do, like we, I had to do a bunch of product shots this morning that we like needed done, um, that we like were, were urgent. Uh, yeah, he'd be pissed. Cause like I have work to do, but. And then like, when do you like take it easy? Do you ever just like kick it or you just go, go, go? For what, this job? No, in life. Like, oh. do you have to like, are you gonna go hibernate for 20 hours this weekend or something? Like, do you ever like catch up on everything? Oh no, we have plans for this weekend. We're going back to the Victorian. We're doing it all over. You just don't get tired? Oh, I'm definitely tired. But like, you catch up on your Sundays, you catch up sleep during the week. I'm not drinking during the week either. Except for last night and today. Except for last night, because it was just my birthday. Like every Sunday. episode of this where you drink like four Costa Bravas <laughs> throughout the episode. But no, like seriously drink. I mean, there's no, there's no party going on. Even when we were out of quarantine, I didn't even party that hard, like on weeknights. It's good. I mean, unless right. I get the call. And then that that. Case. So do you actually feel hangovers? Like, cause I remember when I started training like 25, 26, like the hangovers actually really started messing them up. Like in college, you could just go, go, go. Like, are right. you starting, are hangovers, do they hit you yet or no? Yeah. Like badly? 
like I know, but we, we, what's a hangover? Like it's really like the headaches, the slumber. A hangover. So if I blacked out last night, I would be in bed right now. Still. Right. I just I have an I just have an ability to just like bounce right back from it. Like pop a couple of Advil and then you're good. Gotcha. Well, I mean, college we used to just roll day after day and it was bad. But like roll day after day or roll day after day. No, no, no. Like day after day, you would just be drinking and drinking. And rolling day after day. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, so you had a night last night. Yeah. Good night. Okay. Um, what else Are you? You got a DM last night too you want to talk about? Oh yeah, so somebody, I went into the DMs this morning as I check every morning just to see, is there anything good, anything like happening in there? Um, and then we had this one that really attacked you. I didn't really, I didn't even reply to it because I didn't know how to, but it just goes, have you guys ever addressed Taylor looking like an arrogant shitbag on the profit? Okay, first of all, why does he have to call me an arrogant shitbag? <laughs> um, second of all, I don't think we ever addressed it. And I love that because they'll come in and they'll just be like, whether it's like Matt Belinsky or it's you or other guests we have on, if people don't like them, it's usually like one person will be like, they were the worst fucking person ever. They're such an asshole or blah, blah, blah. call names. And it's like, what, what, what do you want me to do about it? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so in the DMs, like what kind of hate do you get? Like do people hate on D and on and in drama or is it just me and Belinsky? Um, it's usually the guests because they hate when other people come on. Yep. Then, um, I, there's not a ton of hate. I mean, if D says something ridiculous, people usually come in uh, in the DMs trying to hate on that or trying to uh, have some backlash towards that. But like, Anand doesn't say anything too ridiculous, and drama is just a you know he moves things along, so it's not exactly okay. And what's uh, do you get a lot of hate about me? Yeah, when you were first coming on, people were just like, "Fuck this Taylor kid. I don't know who he is. But don't ever have him on again." People also demand that we listen to them. They're like, "Never have yeah. this person on again." Like when Belinsky first came on. They were like, I love you guys, but never, ever do that again and bring him on. And I was just like, wait, we're just going to not do it? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, people said they have so much power. Um, D and on, uh, I think it was who's texting me. Um, D sent me a text from someone yeah. saying, uh, Monday's pod was very dope. This, this is like a quote from his friend that texted him. Yeah. Or someone random DM'd him. Monday's pod was very dope. The subtle tip from Matt about blah, blah, blah contracts was practical and applicable. Matt isn't polarizing at all. I hope he becomes like, he's good. Pete and Taylor seem like nice guys, but more comedic sideshows. No disrespect, but they're still trying to figure out who they are. <laughs> Bitch, I know who I am. Well, I responded to D. I was like, yeah, I mean, Belinsky's good. I agree on that point. But like, don't, don't have him put me in a bucket with Pete trying to figure myself out. <laughs> <laughs> You're the 24-year-old kid just trying to figure himself out. Yeah, I'm like, fuck, I'm in that bucket. We're comedic sideshows. <laughs> I'm struggling uh, but yeah, people, the profit episode that I did, because even I have a big following on LinkedIn too, and like people love to bring that up. Dude, reality TV shows, they could fuck with the shit so much. Like, it's because they I, edit everything. Oh my God, man. We got, uh, what was the term? Franken, um, Franken bit. It's when they clip pieces together. So like right. they'd be filming over my shoulder. Yeah. And he'd ask me a question. And then and I would they'd cut in a response from something. Then they'd cut in different audio. So if he'd be like, He'd be looking at me and they're shooting over my shoulder. So you only see the back of my head. And he'd be like, what, what was your revenue last year? And then I would answer normally. And then he would say, how do you not know this? And I'd be like, I just told you this. Like, what do you, why are you acting weird? Then you're mic'd up 24 seven. So like Parker and I would go get like lunch and then Parker would be like, what do you want? I'm eating a sandwich. I'm like, oh, I don't care. It doesn't really matter. And then when they're shooting that clip, he'd be like, what was your revenue? And it would show. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't really matter. And he's like, how do you not know this? And oh I was just like, what the fuck? In our contract too, for that, they make you sign like a hundred pages of paperwork. And in it, it says like, we are going to create a false narrative about things that aren't true. We're going to take clips and create false situations. And if you tell anyone about this, you'll be fined $5 million. Like that was the thing attached to it. So like, how I long really did you have to deal with that? Like, I, I think mean, it's infinite. Out. So I might be getting fined for this, but fuck it come after fuck me <laughs> dude marcus is such a like uh, he's such a bad person who's marcus oh, explain for the people real quick uh there's a show called the prophet right um it comes on cnbc after shark tank it's like a right. wannabe shark tank but not even like this guy marcus limonis comes in and he helps your business he just goes over and like he has this like whole control like he has a lot of issues on his own and he's like fucking with people and controlling people and um, 
we should have seen the warning signs before because every company that's been on his show said he's the devil, like literally. Mm -hmm. And there's all these articles saying he's the worst person ever. I guess he was abused as a kid and has like all these like really difficult things with him. Got it. So he just likes abusing people. So he just comes in and like just pretty much fucks with you, um, which I wish we would have known before because um, that was a shitty fucking experience. Yeah. Like really fucking shitty. Like he, he made us do some things and like try to manipulate us in some ways. And it was so weird the things he would do. Like he kept trying to pull me and Parker apart. And we're like, dude, like, I don't know why you're fucking with us because we just don't really don't care. Yeah. But, and then the show just made us look like complete jackasses the way they pulled things out of proportion. Right. So that was a, definitely a fun experience. The good news is uh, no one knows who he is and no one watches the show. I say I've and, never heard of the guy or the show. Uh, he has billboards over. You've probably seen it. The Prophet. Um, but more people watch my dog's Instagram story than his show. So. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, Marcus. <laughs> That's what I think is cool about them wanting to do their own TV show, drama, D and on it. Um, for some people who don't know, they were about to start pitching a show uh, before coronavirus happened, which was pretty was similar to that idea of helping um, entrepreneurs out. Yeah, which D and Onan and Drama are good people, like genuinely. Right. Yeah. Marcus is at his core a bad person, and it's actually pretty fucked up that like the network and NBC and TV like they let him do this because like after our show aired and like they could tell like we were kind of pushing back with him because we just didn't take a shit. He'd be like tell us stuff, and we'd, we'd be like, dude no like he made us so many promises like he when we first started working with him he was like look you guys um i'm gonna give you guys on good faith like each a couple hundred grand to put in your pockets as we work through this negotiation and he's like i'm gonna give you equity in all these companies i'm gonna take a small piece of equity in feet and we were like okay that sounds really fucking chill like we're down for that like he was gonna give us equity in all these companies and um like create like a holding company to have all these e-commerce companies together which is like idea we pitched him mm -hmm. uh, it was a good idea in theory and it should have worked. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, front load you guys some money upon your pockets and all this stuff. And we were like tight. Then he just like, for the three months of the show, he never like, we, he's like, he had us work on all of his shitty brands that were just like failing and like digitize them and make them good. And we're like, cool, we get it. Cause we're supposed to be getting equity in these companies. But after like a month or like two or three weeks of working at it, we're like, okay, you told us you'd pay us a couple hundred grand up front. Like he's like, I'll direct deposit all that money right into your bank account to get going. And then I'll give you equity in these companies. And we're like, so he got us like really interested in working on them. Sure. And then after like a couple of weeks, we're like, okay, where's the paperwork? Like, yeah, we get it. He like, and he was like, trust the process. It's a handshake deal. Show me you earn it. Work on those companies. Don't keep asking about money. And we're like, okay. So like the next month we're like, we're fucking doing huge sales and like really like crushing it for his brands. Like we did a full rebrand on one and took it from like this like shitty looking company to like a really good looking digital company. You know, something that we would charge a lot of money for. And then another one, like we did this huge campaign with them and did like, you know, a hundred dollars in one with them, huge or whatever. And we were just like, all right, dude, like we're fucking putting in the work. Like, where's our money? And he was just like, trust the process. And then we started like asking questions. And as we asked questions, it turned out like he just makes false promises to all these entrepreneurs and never pays. So then we started talking to some people who are on previous episodes of the show and they're like, you know, he promised me X, Y, and Z and never gave everything. Like 20 different people told me that like he would promise the world and then never give anyone shit. And like this one guy was like, yeah, he attacked me and like my family personally, like my dad hasn't talked to me since the episode and how they made me look. Someone else said I've contemplated suicide after fucking dealing with him because he's harassed me so much. Someone else said he was addicted to pills and like antidepressants. And I was like, holy fuck, we got to get out of here. So yeah. then we were pretty much like, we told Marcus, we we're like halfway through filming the show. And we're like, dude, like, we're not fucking doing this. Like, we're not going to be your little bitches and put up, like, we have enough good shit going on. And right. like, we pretty much like, no one ever talks back to him because everyone, he's really good at dangling a carrot in front of entrepreneurs and being like, I have what you want. I have all this cash. I have the financial resources. So you never miss a paycheck. And I have the access to all this. And you really want to believe him because what he has is so good. But he just like, fucks it. And we're just like, dude, we're not going to fucking go after your dangled carrot. If you're not going to give a shit, like we have right. enough good shit going on. Like, and no one ever talks back to him. And he was like, blah, blah, blah. He started going so hard. There was one time he cursed me out so bad. He's like, off, obviously, I didn't put this on camera. He's like, Taylor, you're a fucking snarky little fucking asshole. I think the world fucking revolves around you. Like, you don't put in the work, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I've been working. And every person in our DMs. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But I was like, dude, I was working under companies for free for two months. Like, yeah. I don't know. So that was a shitty fucking experience. Okay. Uh, well, so what they see on screen, don't take it all for, uh, it's not all reality, people. Yeah, and even um, on the TV guide, I get screenshots. My friends send me Snapchats and shit all the time. Because uh, how long ago was that? 
this was like a year and a half ago, maybe. Oh, wow. Oh, um, I thought it was way longer. No, dude. It was pretty recent. Wow. So even if you type in um, the profit feet socks. Yeah. The description, like when you're on, on at CNBC or on um, the TV guide. Yeah. Um, it's like, it says, I'll read it to you. Two brash social media influencers build a million dollar sock company, but suffer major losses bringing their company to a standstill. Marcus may be cold feet if their arrogance prevents the business owners from meeting their goals. <laughs> That's the description on all the TV guides. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's scary. It's so funny. I would tell people to go watch it because it's hilarious, but you have to you have to buy it like on YouTube TV or Amazon Prime for two dollars oh, and go fuck, fuck that. that. I do not spend two dollars on that. Just take our word for. Are there any clips out there of just you? Like, yeah, I got some funny clips. Okay. I, there's a clip at the end where he like um, when we split ways and he tries to be like amiable and like nice with us because he always always wants to present himself as the good guy, and he comes over to shake my hand and I just, I'm just sitting down and I just shake his hand. I'm like I don't even get up to shake his hand. I'm just like, dude, go fuck yourself. All right. So if you want to hate on Taylor some more, if you don't hate him enough on yeah, Google, if you dislike me and, yeah. and want that like raging like Ugh, go fuck this guy, spend the two dollars. Go spend the two dollars and watch how bad I just get <laughs> fucking portrayed in this thing. And they'll never come back to any of our content. It will make your blood boil even more. You'll just be like, "Yes, I knew this guy was an asshole." This <laughs> yeah, fuck oh that. God. Okay, um, XPXU. What are you doing there? Or what's what's the outlook there? What are you down at? Nine hundred thousand yeah, so today. Speaking of, if you want, if you think I'm an arrogant asshole and want to see me lose even more, let's see. What Here I'm comes. Um. SBXU, I had a great day today. So today's return is I'm up six thousand dollars today. Okay. So watch us when I zoom down. Total return <laughs> I'm down sixty eight. <laughs> Yikes! So I, it was really bad. I was down like eighty five on this one trade. Um, really, like three days ago, I've had back to back really good days. So yesterday, I went up like eight grand. Today I'm up six grand. So I'm up like 15 grand in the past two days. Yep. But I'm still down 68. Jesus. <laughs> uh, so it's getting a little better. <laughs> so for everyone else who doesn't know the trade, it's, I'm, I'm, that's a triple levered against the S&P 500. So I'm, I'm betting that the stock market tanks. It's been propped up, like, which just doesn't seem like it makes sense at all. Like nope. the stock market has to go down. So I'm, like, logically, I'm like, it has to go down. So I took a big bet on that and I've been getting fucking creamed. So I'm finally coming back. So if the stock market starts tanking, just know I'll be making money. So you can, you can be angry at that. Like when it finally starts giving in and starts tanking, you're going to be like, yes, it's happening. It's kind of fucked. Like I don't want to bet against people in America. But you did. But I did. You bet a lot of money against it. It's true. <laughs> your words say one thing, but your investments say another. It's just ridiculous to me that yeah. it's not coming down. Absolutely. None of it makes fucking sense. It makes literally zero sense. All right, cool. Um, well, moving on. What do we got next? Me. Me. Uh, yeah, I want to do, since we don't have a guest today, I want to talk more about you and more about me and more about how we got started here. So I want to hear, like, how did you go from being, how did you go from first hearing about group chat and living in Madison, Wisconsin, to sitting in Drama's office and taking that over? Well, I always knew this, it would, it would happen this way. It was always <laughs> the plan all along. Did Every, you always was, plan on coming to LA ever? Like, was that part of the master plan when you were in college or you had no idea? Kind of. Um, the idea was like, I just needed to get to a big city. Uh, I realized that, like maybe my sophomore year of college, I was like, Madison and Wisconsin, not for me. Like I need to get out and go bigger. Um, so I was just like, major city wise, it was like Chicago, New York, LA. I hate New York. New York's like terrible to me. Like it's fun to yeah. go visit, but like living there seems god awful so i was about to go to chicago i was really really close to chicago yeah, had d never called me i would be in chicago right now so d just called you one day or like you dm'd him so to kind of back up what i to explain group chat it was like uh i was following d one or um i was on instagram one day and i actually remember this uh this day specifically and i don't know why but i was scrolling by and instagram had suggested for me to follow drama i was like oh that's the guy from rod beardex fantasy factory robin big like watch that shit all the time so I was like, oh, I'll follow him. And then that just trickled me down to his podcast. He kept talking about his podcast. And I when found following drama. Were you like, oh, I thought this guy was like a jackass type dude, like a skater, whatever. Like, damn, he's pretty smart. Like he puts out good content. Were you confused by that at all? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, at first I was, but then it was just kind of like once you listen to it more, you realize that's the guy he is. He's not really this guy, guy that was portrayed. Yeah. Um, so then I was like, wow, this guy's like intelligent. His shit's cool. I mean, I was kind of on that build towards like uh, uh, taking in content, you know, that's uh, motivating for yeah. sure, more educational. Yeah. Right. I mean, I had that kind of like my sophomore and junior year of college. So then I was like, started listening to his podcast, which they then started group chat, but they're just like, they kept saying it, kept saying it, kept, kept saying it. And finally I like listened to it and then I was hooked. And then I listened to it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I listened to all of his stuff. So then I was on group chat and I was just like following it along. Um, and my big thing, they always said to message in, they wanted to talk. Um, and I kept messaging drama. Uh, I, I since now deleted those messages, especially when I got the job, I made sure to delete them. So Why? they could never be proof of that. What were you messaging him? I was just like, Hey, like, uh, what was I saying? I don't even know. It's like cringe worthy shit of just like trying to grab their attention per se, but also like giving feedback on the podcast. Cause that but was, doesn't respond to DMs probably. No. So he's missed it. No. And, and so my big thing was I couldn't get him to respond. And I was like, all right, do I message and try to get a response from the guy with 1.3 million followers or this guy with like less than 20,000 followers? Yep. So I was like, all right, I'll message D. I did it like an off day and he responded, but it was about the podcast. So I was giving just like feedback. Then that opened up dialogue between us. Then Chad, the last guy just said, move to Bali. They were looking for a guy. I was graduating. I gave him my resume. I mean, this was shit like right up my alley. So I was just like, and so LA was- You DM'd your resume? No, I just hit him back about it. Just got emails. I mean, I had D's email already because we had been talking previously. Um, okay. I went and visit when I visited here last December. Oh, okay. You visited him and he just like come by the office and chill. Yeah. He was just like, uh, I was just like, can I swing by? I want to chat for a couple minutes. I'm like in town. Uh, I was in town for like a week. So I was like, this is like my, it was like my last day here. And I was just like, can I come by? We chatted. He was just kind of giving me some advice. And then the job came open. And, and then he was like, okay, cool. Move out to LA tomorrow. Yeah. He goes, uh, how soon can you get here? And I'm literally outside a bar. Cause he called me at like, probably what he called me at like nine, 10 o'clock at night. And cause it's earlier here, yeah. time won't change everything. Um, and he, you know, he's like, all right, we're going to bring you on. Uh, how soon can you get here? I was like, I don't know. Like I'm about to graduate college next week. Like I don't even have my life figured out yet. I was like, I can get there June 1st. And that was like May 12th. Okay about early May. And I was like, I can get out there in like three weeks. So then I landed, I found housing, landed this the day after I landed, I started working. He had a, we had a shoot to do like that Saturday morning. I got it. And were you pretty nervous when you first started? Incredibly nervous. And are you still nervous? No, not at all. No, no, I don't give a fuck. No. I mean, you want to go from like being super nervous to not giving a fuck. Um, once I started understanding what everybody, like everybody's roles were, where I fit in, and now it's just like a clicking system. So that's where I feel most comfortable when I'm just like, when I can go with the ebbs and flows. Do you think Dean didn't like you at first? Like the way he would like give you shit? Or like was he chiller at first? No, I think that was him testing me. That was 100% him testing me. It's 100% anybody testing him just to give like, can I be a, can I like mess with this guy? Like how is he going to re receive it? You know, at first, he's not really a guy uh, to really be like, you know, you fucked up or you did this or that. He, he stays pretty calm. Um, but then I think once they felt comfortable uh, with our relationship and knew that I could like take some shit, I think that's where they kind of went in on me, which is fine. Like I've always been that way and people have always kind of yeah, done that shit. with me. But Why do you think people always give you shit? I don't know. Because I'm just an easy person to give shit to and I give it like back and I can take it. Like I'm yeah. not going to go cry about it. I'm not going to be a little, like a little bitch about it. But it's like, yeah. if you want to call me an idiot, cool. Like I'm going to call you an idiot. I'm going to make fun of you, but like, don't take everything to heart. Like, it's not serious. How does your mom feel about you being called an idiot? At first she was like, she was like, how dare you? She was like, even in the comments being like, he's not an idiot. And I'm like, mom, look, it's just like, oh, play. It's a, it's a part of the, uh, the character building that we're having here. So yeah. it's fine. But. Okay. Interesting. And then are you like the coolest one in your friend group now? Like here like or friends are like, like who are working, like they're stupid. No, not here. Obviously not here. <laughs> <laughs> Drama. We know you're spot on the table. Your friends back from like college and like, are they just like, what? You're hanging out with celebrities. Nobody understands what I do. I mean, it's kind of hard to describe what I do. I mean, I, we work. I, would it. I don't know. I, I put myself in my email tag. I'm a creative director. I don't know if I really am. Nobody creative gave me a title. What? Huh? What creative director of what? Just creative director. I mean, creative director. <laughs> Cause I like help D with all of his stuff. <clears throat> I help the brand. I help Menlo club. I have five, four that we do all the things group chat. 
I mean, so there's so much where it's just like, I don't really know how to describe my job. Like I'm a content creator, but then, you know, photography, videography was really my big thing. But then it's like a lot of it's digital marketing, digital media, things like that. Yep. But all your friends from college, when they talk to you, they're like, are they like, your job's so cool. Life's yeah. awesome. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. They're like, oh, dude, how's drama? And I'm like, drama's a normal guy. Like, it's not that crazy. Like, even when my friends come and visit, I'll have them like stop into work uh, and then be like, kid, kid. Can I meet drama? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, like if he's in the office, he'll say hi to you. And yeah. then <laughs> my friends are like freaking out once because they were gonna meet him, and they're like, what do I say? What do I say? He's like, I'm like, he's a normal person. Just say hi. Yeah. And then he like came in. Uh, they were out in the waiting room, um, and he like came in, and I go, oh, drama. These are my friends. They wanted to. I wanted you to meet them. Uh, they wanted to say hi. And he's like, oh, how's it going, guys? And they were just like so shocked. They were like, oh, he's really normal. It's like, yes. It's not. Like, were you starstruck when you first met drama? No, for like a second. I mean, I listened to too much of their podcasts and everything to really be starstruck. Yeah. <clears throat> That's funny. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I think I'm doing a lot cooler stuff than a lot of the kids I graduated with, but. <clears throat> I mean, definitely. Yeah. All of them. <clears throat> like this job doesn't exist, A, anywhere else, and B, like this job just doesn't exist in general. Yeah. It's, like, what do you even call this job? D's bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad about it. I get to live in LA. That's true. It's a good life out here. It's better than Wisconsin. It's true. Cool. What else we got? Um, what about you? Let's touch on your side of group. Like, why did you come? I think it's funny how you you maneuvered your way from. I'm gonna start showing up. Like you, we were just having people come by. Then yeah. you start coming by. Then it's kind of like, okay, we need somebody to write a newsletter. Taylor can. Taylor can write. Let's have Taylor do the newsletter into like, we're starting this whole Melrose Street Journal thing now. Yeah. I think when I first got introduced, because we were running a brand similar, when we were doing Feet Socks, like we switched over, we did like all that, he's a completely different brand. But we used to have a brand that was very similar to Young and Reckless with Feet Socks. Yeah. We were just like young and doing fun, reckless shit all the time. Uh, my friend Dexter was a videographer for Young and Reckless. And he's yeah. like, you gotta do shit with drama. You gotta do something. Oh, I have his computer. You have Dexter's computer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dexter, if you're watching this, come get your computer back. Because <laughs> uh, it airdrops to Dexter, and everyone's like, who's Dexter? I'm like, I don't know who the fuck Dexter is, but he had this computer. Yeah, no, Dexter's awesome. You got to meet him at some point. Um, <clears throat> he's like, got to do a vlog or something. We were like, putting out a shitload of content. Do some shit with drama. It never like panned out in that way, but then I started following drama and everyone. Then I started listening to group chat. And then when they started like talking about like guests or whatever, I was just like, I kept telling them, like, I'm, I'm your guest. Like, bring me on. <laughs> There's like, I think they, they didn't ask me. I told them that I was coming on or it's yeah. coming out. <laughs> like, okay, like we don't really know that this kid just like keeps coming to hang out. So yeah. whatever. And then when D was talking about a newsletter, I was just like, I'm your guy. And he was like, can you write a newsletter? And I was like, yeah, I'm your guy. Just let me do it. Um, right. And they want me to do like a newsletter every, just they want me to write like a quick, like one thing on uh, every topic and they do it three times a week. Like when they do the topic list and write about the podcast. And I was like, no, no, fuck that. I'm doing a daily newsletter. I'm going to crush it. It's going to be better than that. Right. Start doing that shit. Then I was like, guys, you guys are sitting on fucking gold here. And yeah. That's kind of evolved and just like, kept getting more and more involved. Right. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about working for these guys and working with them is there's always opportunity for more and they're always willing to just roll with it. Like, yeah, that's what they like, They're so down with shit. Like even yeah. when I first met D probably two or three years ago, I was like telling him, I was like, dude, you got to build your personal brand. You got to do this. He's like, yeah. And he's like, went fucking balls to the walls on it. And like, I was hired like, to be, to help him build his brand. And now I've like stretched that out to so much more, but like that was my job was to yeah. come in and build, help build his brand. Yeah. And you're doing his a great personal, job, which is crazy. Yeah. And now you got to build your personal brand out of no, that. I'm building mine. I said, do you pay me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you are, you're getting some pretty sick connections for a 24 year old from Wisconsin. Yeah, I mean, if you just go with the flow of things, these guys also are like so well connected too. It's like being in their circles and and then talking with those people. You just everybody's so well connected and everybody's pretty open to it too. I'm just about meeting and um, yeah, growing. Who's the coolest person you've met or seen or anything or the coolest thing that's happened? It was probably when we went to Delilah. Okay. What yeah, happened? and I mean, Kyle Kuz, no Kuzma wasn't there. It's was Danny Green. Saw Danny Green. I mean, we were out with the football guys. First of all. The quarterbacks, the yeah, Allens. the Allens. I mean, Josh, Josh Allen is a fucking, well, he was a top five pick, and he was just, like, chilling there talking to us. Really cool. Kyle's super cool. 
and he's an NFL quarterback as well. So it's just like that whole idea. It's like that's who you would hang around now is really cool. Yeah. Um, but Jared, no. Um, who was it there? There were some artists that like walked over and like dabbed up D and like said hi to all of us. And he's a super big artist. I can't think of his name now. I'm blanking on it. But he was just like so casual with it. And I was yeah. like, this is crazy. And I Are mean. Are homies with the Allens? You like text them and shit? Josh or Kyle? Um, I mean, Kyle, like, we'll just DM him about stuff or I'm yeah. replying, but not, like, having conversation or anything. Yeah. That's cool. You're I'll really have my cool. redemption at going back out with them. I know. Well, what happened that night? You blacked out or something? Yeah, I, I went uh, face first into an ice bucket of poppy. Yeah, I'm sensing a common theme with this blacking out. I mean, it's not that, it's not that crazy. Like, blacking out's not... It's no, not no, going like, face first into an ice bucket at a club. That was a complete accident, and it wasn't even, like, that serious it, it kind of was but like or it was like, you like fell asleep and your face fell in it or you just like, i don't really know that's the part about blacking out like you don't picture, really, like, a video of this? huh do they have a picture or a video or is this just like eyewitness news no like it's eyewitness news i just like how'd you get your face to land so perfectly in a bucket of ice i don't know you're just sitting there and you just <clears throat> that's what i was told but like my my intention is a to never really black out at b now it's like <laughs> Depending on the people I'm around, you know, I watch how much I drink just because I did A not to black out. What happened last night? Uh, well, that was my birthday. It doesn't count. <laughs> you're telling me on your birthday you're going to take it easy? It's like, that's not a thing. Like, get the fuck out of here. You're a wild one. It's just, it's just what I do. I was born to do it. So you're, you're ready for all the bars and clubs to open again? Oh, my God. The second, we're going to have so many good stories for this, um, for behind closed doors once we get back to partying. But you're going out this weekend. So what's the deal with that? You can go drink outside? Yeah. So if you go over into Santa Monica by the Victorian, outside the Victorian, they have an outside um, bar. You A, can get food and it's all like, in the, uh, you can take it and there's a lawn across from the Victorian that you literally just go over, get your drinks and then come back and go onto the grass. So it's just like one big grass. Area. And are people getting pretty messed up there? Ah. Uh, like nothing crazy it's hard they're all like bottled drinks so everything's already sealed bottled you can't just be it's not like you know going out you're just getting drink after drink um it's more of just kind of like hanging out on the lawn casual for a saturday but gotcha how much do you spend on a day when you go out like that on drinks and ubers and everything on a day like that i don't know that could be up in the air and how does that compare to wisconsin like is it twice oh, as much Wisconsin's is cheap we used to have a bar that you could get uh, on Thursday nights. You start at nine o'clock, you could get 25 cents. You spent 25 cents for a, a mixed drink. And then it would just go 25 up 25 cents for a mixed drink? And it would go up a quarter every hour. And at midnight, they would be a dollar. No way. And you had to do it, if you did credit card, you had a $10 minimum. So we would just get blasted. Wait, 25 cents a drink, $10 minimum. That's, I mean, you you buy drinks for everybody. <laughs> yeah. For $10, you get 40 drinks. Right. And for $10, you don't even get a drink. No. That's insane. How do they sell 25 cent drinks? I don't, I, I don't work for them. I don't know. <laughs> so how plastered were you getting that? Plastered. I mean, it's college. Like it's, it's like going out, you know, it's easy to. Wow. That's fucking wild. But here it's crazy. I mean, going out could get so expensive. So it's like. Yeah, I mean, because your Uber from West Hollywood to Santa Monica alone is 30, 40 bucks, no? 20? Uh, it's like 15. It's 15 bucks to Uber from West Hollywood to Santa Monica? Uh, that's like on a, but that's probably in the cheap end. I would probably say it's more closer to 20, 30 if there's like. So it's like 20 there and back. So that's 40 bucks there. You get four drinks at the bar, 15 40, bucks each. 50 bucks at least. At 100 bucks every time you go out versus oh, in Wisconsin? More than 100. More than 100? I bet it's probably closer to two. You're spending two hundred dollars every time you go out. That's if I'm going out and like, yeah. If I'm like, but then if we're pregame and I'm not really drinking that much, but like, yeah, yeah it's easy to rack up two hundred. But then it's just like you're splitting the Ubers with everybody else. Um, I don't know. And then what? What's a night out in Wisconsin? Twenty five cents? <laughs> no, it's more like two dollars. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it probably you get away with like thirty bucks. Thirty so forty bucks. It's like five to 10 times more expensive to go out in LA. You can, yeah, you can, I mean, you can walk everywhere. You don't need to really Uber unless you're trying to go like literally to, to the opposite ends of where the bars are. 
Um, so you can walk for the most part. So you don't really need an Uber. And even if you do do an Uber, it's like less than 10 bucks to get home because everything's pretty close. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, drinks are only anywhere between three to four bucks on a normal. And then if they're specials, they can get a lot cheaper. Wild. Or there was Does one that was like, off? huh? Doesn't that piss you off? I mean, it is what it is. What am I going to do about it? <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. There's not much I can do to try to like bitch about dick. I'm going to be like, ah, too fucking bad. Go back to Wisconsin then. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Cool. Anything else we got? Uh, what do we got? That's it. I don't know. Guys, uh, if you like this stuff, share it with people. Oh, Just yeah. Do, do the sharing thing. Share it on your yeah. socials. Share it on your okay. stories. If you watch all the way up to this point, thank you. We appreciate it. Um, and if you know anybody cool or are somebody cool, we'd love to have you on. DM us. Let us know. We're always interested in having new people. If you didn't check out our last episode with Kelly Kay, uh, right. she's making forty thousand dollars a month on OnlyFans. Wild. That's insane. Wow. So we dive yeah. in a bunch of that. If you have some stories or if you have some cool shit going on, hit us up. We'll bring you on as a guest. Just don't be like Ryan Tierney. Just don't be like Ryan Tierney. Don't <laughs> flop on us, man. Don't flop on us. Okay, I met your boy PD. He's at Taylor Offer. Guys, follow group chat. Listen to D2 or D's podcast. Go listen to group chat. We have a newsletter. Um, head, head over to MelroStreet.com. Melrose Street Journal. MelroStreetJournal.com. Um, we write articles on there about all types of random shit. I don't know. That's it. That's it. All right. We'll see you Monday. This is.